the study was um, done around osteoarthritis, obviously, and it, I focused on this disease because I've always been interested in musculoskeletal tissues, and I had a tissue engineering um, regenerative medicine background since all the way back from my PhD. And the focus on osteoarthritis was um, so currently is, in, is because it is actually a disease that affects a lot of people around the world, like 300 million plus. And a lot of what people don't realize about it is that it um, frequently occurs together with other comorbidities, what we call, which are diseases occurring concurrently with osteoarthritis. And that could uh, actually increase, like the fact that you have osteoarthritis together with say cardiovascular disease or diabetes or whatever could actually increase your risk of death by up to twofold because of having them concurrently. So I think that's a point that is easily missed by people that it's not just that people, you know, have painful joints and they have reduced quality of life. They also have a reduced life expectancy because of this disease. And because it's a chronic disease that requires a lot of management over the long term, that's a huge burden for patients and healthcare systems and there is no cure for this disease so essentially in the end you just have to choose to get a joint replacement or not but then the surgery is also risky and then a lot of people by the time they get to that stage cannot actually do that because of various other presenting problems so that's the background to this and then i mean the concept of using stem cells to treat osteoarthritis is not necessarily new like people have run clinical trials about this in the past um, but what has been identified as a gap I guess in the literature is that regardless of what people are doing in terms of trying to find the best tissue source of stem cells like whether they be from the bone marrow or adipose tissue or maybe some other source or to inject them at different doses like different um, amounts of stem cells or different frequencies i would say that currently we don't have enough data to say that this therapy would be effective and in a consistently effective kind of way in the long term and that's a problem and that has been reflected by lots of systematic reviews on this topic and so i guess um you in my quest to find like the best stem cell therapy for osteoarthritis without like, you know, obviously without the capacity to conduct all these different clinical trials with different combinations, I kind of looked into establishing a in vitro model, like basically like, um, growing cells in a dish, but trying to emulate the um, the environments that will be relevant to an osteoarthritic joint as much as possible. And to see the interactions between the stem cells and the osteoarthritic cells to see what, what are they actually doing to each other in vitro that sort of takes it out of the complex system and just examines the interactions between these two main cell types and see, you know, what that could tell us like whether there is some useful information coming out from that that could inform us about why this therapy isn't working as well as we anticipate in you know in clinical scenarios and after a series of experiments uh, which i probably won't elaborate on but essentially i used um, what are called mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow and they are adult stem cells and I co-cultured them with osteoarthritic cells that were extracted from patients who had undergone joint replacement therapy and I found that the so what was expected was that the MSCs so the stem cells were having beneficial effects on the osteoarthritic cells but mainly over the shorter term and then the but what was I guess a bit more surprising and not as anticipated and I think not many people have really considered is that the osteoarthritic cells were acting back on the MSCs and causing them to express more inflammatory markers in the long term and also impairing their ability to differentiate into bone and cartilage tissues and I, and I also conducted another experiment whereby I exposed the osteoarthritic cells to MSCs, assuming that they would have positive benefits. And then I put those cells back with fresh MSCs and then found that essentially the MSCs didn't make any long-term changes to these osteoarthritic cells. So the benefits that they were exerting were all short-term, but then in the long-term, the osteoarthritic cells were still having this inflammatory kind of catabolic phenotype that then keeps on influencing the MSCs in the wrong direction. So I think those findings were really useful in terms of of 
at least giving a hypothesis or an explanation to why maybe over the long term, a lot of the clinical therapies using stem cells have not performed as well as expected. Like it's obviously worked in some patients um, and, you know, it's been reported, but I wouldn't say that that is true for the general population. And that leads on to my current work. So outside this presentation, what I'm working on now is to try and optimize the environments for growing the stem cells so that we can make them produce the best bioactive factors that we then can use as a regenerative therapy instead of the cells themselves. And that has a lot of advantages, um, such as the fact that obviously they don't respond to the diseased environment. So you can put them in and they won't have this long-term kind of weird response where they become inflammatory. And secondly, also that if we can optimize the, uh, the environment, then and potentially using advanced computational methods, then we can tailor the what the stem cells do towards a particular disease rather than the current way where people kind of just use stem cells and put them in randomly without really doing anything to them first. Um, and I guess the third one would be from a practical perspective whereby you would have less regulatory hurdles associated with using a non a, a cell based product, but that doesn't involve live cells, and that will be a lot easier to translate in the long term. So that's like I guess that in a nutshell. 